Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Wilson Zhu, and I'm a high school student from the United States of America. And I'm here to present my paper, um, Automated Assay Scoring System Using Multi-Model Machine Learning. So abstract, why do you need an automated essay scoring system? So I started this project because one of the teachers in my school complained about having to grade large number of essays with the same prompt year after year. So this is also a problem seen in standardized testing, such as the SAT and the TOEFL. So all these tests uh, all have large number of essays that needs to be graded, and all of them have similar or just the exact same prompt. So the current grading approach is manual. So two human graders are required for one essay. And in the example of the SAT, a third human grader is used if the two human grader does not agree with each other. And it often takes about two months after the test is taken for the essay score to be released. So with, our, with the automated essay scoring system that we're building here, we hope to achieve, we hope to assist and facilitate the human graders. So about 2.2 million students take the SAT every year. So if we, even if we only use, we use 50% of the total essays, and then we, we only use this automated essay scoring system to facilitate other human graders, that is still 1.1 million less essay needed, need, not needed to be graded by a human grader. And this system can also be used as a standalone grader for faster and more effective grading. So past approaches. So some past, the past approaches include feature extraction and word embedding. So feature extraction, uh, some examples are the E-Rater, the Intellimetrics, and et cetera, which are still in use today. So it uses word counts and other numerical features such as the grammar mistakes and spelling mistakes to evaluate the essay. And it uses and it identifies the content of the essay using bag of words and specific word cons, counts to determine the content and how it relates to the prompt. So in the past, these uh, this feature extraction approaches take these values and then use an algorithm to compute, to compute the final score. Whereas more modern approach use a neural network to take in all the inputs and outputs of the score. So the setbacks for feature extraction is its weak content identification. So you need, so it calculates how relevant the content of the essay is to prompt. So in an essay where the prompt is a single sentence, for example, persuasive essay. So let's say the prompt is, why are we interested in science? and the student writes an essay regarding chemistry and then uses a lot of specific vocabularies for chemistry, such as calorie, calorimetry, entropy, enthalpy. And then, so then the bag of word and specific word count doesn't really work because in the prompt, none, none of the word matches the specific terms in the essay. So this is one of the weaknesses of feature extraction. So, the most modern approach is word embedding presented by a Stanford research paper. So the word embedding approach combines the word embedding and then the recurrent neural network to determine the score of the essay. So it is very effective at determining the content of the essay using semantic similarities. And then, but however, it does not account for how well the author writes. So the features such as word counts and other numerical features are not accounted for in this approach. So our solution. So our solution uses both ex feature extraction and word embedding. So at the beginning of this project, uh, we only use feature extraction. However, uh, after we tried to build a more robust feature extraction a neural network, we found that there's not much room to improve about. And then we switch to using solely word embedding. And then the problem with word embedding, as I said before, is that it doesn't account for how well the author write. So when we're testing the word embedding a neural network, we can, we can base, so there's basically a good an essay with high score. And then we can simply rearrange the word in a, in a way that it is unreadable by human. 
But when we input it into this into the neural network, it returns the almost exact score. So, so during research, we found that we can combine the two neural networks, the feature extraction and word embedding neural networks, into a single neural network using multi-model machine learning. So as you can see, the left branch of the picture. So the input is a sequence representing the, the essay. And it's inputted into an embedding layer and then inputted into a, a new recurrent neural network, in this case, the long short-term memory. And then which and then its output is inputted into a dropout layer to prevent overfitting. Because in this neural network, there's a large amount of parameters and a very large data set and then into a dense layer and then into a concatenate layer. And on the right branch, we have the feature extraction, which is a, with the input being a feature vector, basically, input it into a two-layer neural network with dropout layer to prevent overfitting. And then the output of these layers are concatenated and then put into another two-layer neural network to determine the final score. Uh, we use Python, uh, Keras with TensorFlow backend, sklearn, and Jupyter Lab to do the small testing and Google Collab to do most of the training and calculations. So I'm going to do a demo of the research. So as you can see, this is our uh, fine. This is more of the finalized product. So this is all the imports loading model. So this is the feature extraction part of the process. So all of the numerical counts, which I'm going to talk about later. And this is the word embedding neural network. So we can run this code right here. And then we can enter and give an essay from the site. So take this one, for example. So this one got a score of 10. And then it's essay set 1.0. So it received the score of 10 as predicted. And then we can try it. So there are different essay set. So I'm gonna go through another essay set example. So it's still on essay set number one. So essay set number two, uh, let's go to essay set number three. So this is the final score. So let's try one. So it gave the return a score of one. So as we can see from the demo, it is quite effective, but there are still improvements to be made to the application. So feature extraction. So as I said before, there are feature extraction. We have a feature extraction neural network. So there are two parts. So the grammar part of feature extraction and the structure. So grammar, so part of speech. So each part of speech is counted. So adjective, adverb, verb, uh, noun, pronouns are all counted. So we count this because the more, say the more adjective and adverb you use, the more, the, the more, the more descriptive the writer is. So we can determine how well the author is able to use language. Also, the grammar and spelling mistakes are of course counted because the more mistake you make, the lower score you're gonna get. And the structure, so total word count and character counts evaluate how long the essay is because in general, the longer the essay, the higher the score. And unique word counts. So, Repeating the same word is going to give you a lower score. So say you use the word boring in your essay 20 times, as opposed to using other versions of boring, such as monotonous, uninteresting, unexciting, dull, wearisome, tiresome, to name a few. So using the word, just the word boring is going to make your essay extremely boring, of course. But using other board might make your essay more interesting and shows that you're able to remember a wide range of vocabularies. And also we take the average word length as well, because longer words tend to be more difficult to remember 
A longer words also shows that you're more profi proficient at writing. Because shorter words, there are only so many of them, right? So compared to two sentences, it is a very sad day. So the, each word is very short. While the other sentence, melancholic fragrance flourishes in the air. So the average word length of the second sentence is longer. While they, they have the exact same word count and unique word count, the average word length of the second sentence is higher and therefore and because, as we can see, the second sentence is obviously a superior sentence, we, uh, the average word count, word length, can be used to determine how well the author is able to write. And the sentence count, paragraph count, and comma count are all, effect, are all somewhat correlated with higher scores. After we take all of these counts, we clean the essay by correcting the grammar and spelling mistakes. So we correct these mistakes because human when, read, when grading an essay, read with error. So what it means is that when you when the writer misspells a word in the essay, the human tries the human grader will try to read it as if it's correct. So say you misspell the word separate, so the human would know that you misspelled the word, and then they would deduct point but recognize that the word is still separate, not uh, totally unrecognizable, right? And then the spelling mistake. So that's why we correct the grammar and spelling mistake. And we also remove stop word. The, she, him, I, too. So these words are unessential to the content of the essay. That's why we remove them. And then to get a more uh, accurate idea of how the content of the essay actually is. And then we also lemmatize the word. So we get the root version of every word. So the we, so if we lemmatize the word lemmatization, we get the word lemma. So after we clean the essay, we get a more bare bone version of the essay, which, which is just about the content of the essay. And then it, it, is, it doesn't have any excessive words or any filler words. And then we take all of the structure counts again to get a, more, to get a better idea of how well the author is able to write. And then this, all of these numbers are compiled into a single vector and I'll put it into the two-layer new network. So word embedding. So as I said before, we clean the essay. And then after we clean the essay, the string is also, I'll put it into this word embedding neural, into a word tokenizer, which outputs a sequence, converts into a sequence, and then inputs it into the word embedding neural network. So what is a word embedding? It is a learned vector of set length to represent a word or phrase. So this, this vector accounts for semantic similarities between words. So a common example used is the vectors of the, the word king minus the vector of the word men plus the vector of the word woman is equal to the vector or approximately the, the vector of the word queen. So we can use this to represent the content of the essay, which is not covered in our feature extraction neural network. So there are many options for word embedding. So we could have chose Spacey, a natural language processing library, or the Word2Vec, but we chose global vector for word representation by um, Stanford, so GLOVE in short, because, this, because it is the most readily available and the easiest to implement. And then two other factors to account for in the word embedding neural network are the embedding dimensions, which is the length of the vector representation of the word and the recurrent neural network. So different types of recurrent neural networks. So we designed an experiment to test for the most optical word embedding neural network. So we didn't test for the feature extraction or the final two layer neural network because we found that there's not really much room for improvement for these two neural networks. So the two variables we're gonna test for are the word embedding dimensions and the recurrent neural networks. So there are two, so there are four word embedding dimensions, 50, 100, and 200, and 300, 300 for GLOVE. So longer word dimensions gives more information to the neural network, but it sacrifices um, computation time, memory, and sometimes too much information does not mean better information. Sometimes too much information can be too specific and can confuse the neural network. 
And we also, there are three different types of recurrent unit networks we're going to test. So long short term memory, gated recurrent unit, and bidirectional long short term memory. So long short term memory is used because it is the most widely used new recurrent neural network. And gated recurrent unit is basically a long short term memory with fewer parameters. So we get a faster training time with gated recurrent unit. And bidirectional long short term memory basically it reads the essay from top to bottom and bottom to top again. So more information is retained this way because lo both long short term memory and gated recurrent unit have a forget gate and tends to forget information earlier on in the essay. And with the bidirectional layer, we can actually maintain and keep most of these information. So the data we are going to use is uh, the, automated essay, the automated student assessment prize. So a 2012 Kaga competition data set. It is used by many um, recent automated essay scoring research paper. And each essay in the essay data set is manually scored by two human graders. And of course, there are exceptions. And there are eight sets of essays, each with different prompts. So different topics, so computer, bikes, politics, and different type of prompt. So some are text-based, which the student reads a body of text and gives an answer to a question, or persuasive. So a, a simple question is presented and the student tries to persuade the reader of, of his or her opinion. And there are also different ranges of scores. So essay set one is from two to 12, essay set three is from one to four, and essay set eight is from zero to 60. And the average length of each set of essay varies greatly. So some are short answer questions, so around 20 words. Others are paragraph responses. And essay set seven and eight are full essay with different paragraphs. So there are approximately 13,000 essay in the test set. So we're going to use 90% for training and 10% for testing. So evaluation. So we're going to evaluate each of our, each of our model using a mean quadratic weighted kappa, and the equation is shown here. So the, cap, the kappa ranges from negative one to one. Uh, kappa of one means complete agreement between the graders, and in this case, the machine and the human. And the kappa of zero means random agreement between the graders, so the machine and the human. And the kappa of below zero is meaningless because it shows that the machine is actively trying to disagree with the human grader. So training. So we use the, so in, during training, we use the atom optimizer. So at first we use the default atom optimizer, which gave extremely poor result, uh, low, slow training time and very poor accuracy. So we use this custom curve as shown over here to, and we got much better score and much faster training time with this learning rate. So uh, we set the F, we set each, model to be trained for 40 epics and a batch size of 50. And to word tokenizer. So we place some limitations on the word tokenizer. So we set the max length, so the max number of words in each essay that is to be recognized to 500. And the max number of words mapped to its word vector, word embedding representation to be 5,000. So we set these limitations because we want to limit the amount of memories used and the reduce the number of parameters on our model uh, because so the application can be used on wider ranges of, of devices, which, and also we, we can limit training time by placing this, these limitations. So different neural networks. So this is the training graph for essay set number one, uh, word embedding of 200. So different models are presented here. So LSTM with an accuracy of 82%, GRU with an accuracy of 41%, bidirectional LSTM with an accuracy of 62% at the end of the 40 epics training. So as we can see, LSTM has the highest accuracy and GRU, of, as I stated before, have the fastest, uh, ep is faster at converging. It converged at around 10 epics and 
So an experiment result. So the table here shows the quadra mean quadratic weighted kappa versus the word embedding and neural network types. So the results are very similar to the training graphs. So LSTM performs the best, IOSTM performs second, and GRU performed the worst. So we speculate this is due to LSTM performing a uh, grading the essay most like a human graded, because mean quadratic weighted kappa measures how similar the human and the machine grade. So GRU, because of its fewer parameters and so it, retain, it didn't retain as much information as a human grader would. And that's what we're speculating. And thus, it lost some of the crucial information and was not able to achieve a high kappa. So by LSTM performed second. So we speculate, although with more, per, more information, because it reads from top to bottom and bottom to the top again, uh, we, this is because it does not retain the same information as a human grader would because a human grader would read from the top to bottom and not, not from bottom to top again. So the information in the BIOSTM model would be different from the information that a human grader would receive when they're grading the essay. So LSTM retained a moderate amount of information while reading similar, while getting the same or similar information as a human grader and therefore it performs the best. So we can also see from the data that the word embedding uh, does not, did not have a, really have a significant imp impact on the Kappa score, uh, except in the case of great gated recurrent unit. We speculate this is due to gated recurrent unit have a lot less parameters than the other two. And therefore, it is heavily dependent on, dependent on bounding information given to it. So conclusion. So this application has the potential to be used in real world, uh, but it needs definitely needs some improvement. So it is most effective with short essays and smaller range of scores, so one to four. So possible improvements, because it fails, it not fail, uh, it performs worse at longer essays with large range of, range of scores. We can, we can improve this application when grading large essay with large range of scores. So we split the large range of score into individual category scores, and then use a model to train to train based on the each category score and add these score together so that each model only has to deal with a smaller range of scores. And we can also consider using the BERT embedding as opposed to GLOVE, but BERT embedding is relatively new. And then we can also use the term inverse, term frequency inverse document frequency to uh, make the content of the longer essay more apparent because as the essay gets longer, the crucial information is doled out. So this allows the crucial information to stand out more. Um, thank you for watching my presentation and I appreciate your time.